It's November 22nd, 2012, Thanksgiving Day in America's heartland, East Rutherford, New Jersey. The Jets are down 14-0 against the Patriots. The play breaks down and Mark Sanchez scrambles in an attempt to save the day. But why did the play break down? And where did these points come from? And why is he headed straight for that butt? To find out, we must rewind. It's week 12 of the 2012 NFL season, and the 7-3 Patriots are already well on their way to their fourth consecutive division title. The Jets, two years removed from back-to-back -back AFC Championship appearances, are shit. They're four and six, and actual human beings are debating whether or not it's a good idea to bench QB Mark Sanchez for the newly acquired Tim Tebow. It's time to unleash Tebow. But the animosity between the two teams tends to make for entertaining games, regardless of how well each team is doing that year. Their first matchup this season was in week seven. It was a back and forth battle that went to overtime, despite this beautiful second quarter ripper by Sanchez to the back of the net for two New England points. In overtime, the Patriots kicked a field goal and gave the Jets a chance at a game ending touchdown. But Sanchez, caught off guard by the active defense, fumbled the game away instead. So, all things considered, people are expecting a good game. Including schedule makers. Following the end to six years of NFL Network exclusivity, this is the first primetime Thanksgiving game shown on a broadcast network. With 20 million people watching live, a 30-second ad spot on this game costs $975,000. But the Jets are in a hole early. Their second drive of the game was cut short by this man, Patriots safety Steve Gregory who picked off Sanchez with the Jets in field goal range. Eh, who needs three points? The Pats scored, and then the Jets became acquainted with Brandon Spikes. After Bilal Powell got stuffed running up the middle on third down, the Jets decided to just do that again on fourth down within field goal range. But they gave Sean Green a chance this time. Spikes reached across the pile and popped it out of Green's hands. The ball was chased down by our friend Steve Gregory, and a disheartened Sean Green motion to the sideline. That's a slippery a meat ball. So here we are. The Jets have the ball back, down 14-0, and thankfully aren't in field goal range yet. That would be bad luck. They draw up a misdirection on first down, which means instead of fullback Lex Hillard blocking for Sean Green, who would come up the left side for the handoff, Green will peel off and Hillard will take a quick handoff on Sanchez's right side. They snap the ball and Sanchez immediately turns the wrong way, and finds out everyone else is following the actual play call. So like a scared little puppy, he runs. And smartly, he is headed towards this man, Brandon Moore. Moore was an undrafted free agent that the Jets signed in 2002. In 2004, he blocked for Curtis Martin as he led the league in rushing, and had been pivotal to Sanchez's early success. He's coming off a 2011 Pro Bowl season, and this is his 132nd consecutive start for the Jets. And that's him pushing fellow pro bowler Vince Wilfork back and not the other way around. So with the odds of success heavily in Sanchez's favor, let's take a look at how he got here. As the nation's top quarterback coming out of high school in 2005, Sanchez was named successor to the throne at USC. Once Heisman winner Matt Leinart left to enjoy a long and fruitful career in the NFL. He eventually earned the starting position in 2008 and threw 34 touchdowns en route to a 12-1 season and MVP honors at the Rose Bowl. After the season, Sanchez said he didn't think he could leave USC, and after only one year as a starter, it would be a pretty good idea to stay in school. But then stud QBs Colt McCoy, Sam Bradford, and Tim Tebow all opted to stay in school rather than enter the draft. So Sanchez took the opportunity to be the bell of the ball and declared for the 2009 draft, despite Pete Carroll, his own coach, being a vocal critic about his NFL readiness. He knows that coming out early is a tremendous challenge for a quarterback, and the statistics don't back up that it, it's easy to be successful. But what the f does a coach know? The Jets at this time had just fired head coach Eric Mangini and hired first-time head coach Rex Ryan. They also released 39-year-old quarterback Brett Favre, leaving the position vacant. While watching a pre-draft Sanchez throw around, Rex said they saw great feet, and he knew they had to have him. So they gave a call to their old pal Eric Mangini, who was now the head coach for the Browns, and flipped their 17th pick and a handful of players 
for the number five overall pick. The Jets got their man. Mark Sanchez and the Jets immediately silenced the doubters. He became the second rookie quarterback to win two playoff games before losing to the Colts in the AFC Championship. The following year, Sanchez and the 11-5 Jets faced the Patriots in the divisional round of the playoffs in Foxborough. The Pats entered this game with an 8-1 home playoff record with Brady at the helm and were the obvious betting favorite. But Sanchez's three touchdown passes, including an all-time Jets catch by Santonio Holmes in the corner of the end zone, stunned the Patriots 28-21. The Jets advanced to the AFC Championship game for the second year in a row. At this point, Mark Sanchez was now tied for second in playoff road wins by a quarterback in NFL history. Seriously. In 2011, Sanchez was named team captain, and the Jets altered their ground-and-pound run-first offense to one more focused on their young stallion of a quarterback. For the first time since Sanchez joined the team, the Jets threw the ball more than they ran it. Considering Sanchez ranked 29th in completion percentage in 2009 and 2010, that might not have been the smartest move. The team infamously crumbled at the end of the season when Santonio Holmes, the team's star receiver, just up and quit in the middle of a Week 17 matchup against the Dolphins. He spent the end of the fourth on the bench following an in-huddle argument. A win would have sent them back to the postseason for a third year in a row. But instead, Sanchez threw two fourth-quarter interceptions. The Jets lost 19-17. In the offseason, anonymous teammates leaked to the press that Sanchez was lazy. There was no competition at the quarterback position, and they felt that made Sanchez content. So the Jets decided to go out and sign competition to push him. But instead, they traded for Tim Tebow. They started the 2012 season under a circus tent, and Sanchez was in the middle chucking peanuts. With only three wins heading into the week nine bye, fans were starting to give up and were calling for a switch to Tebow, which really says a lot about the state of the team. And then in week 12, the Jets hosted a primetime Thanksgiving game against the New England Patriots. Down two scores, Mark Sanchez is determined to get his team and his career back on track. With over 20 million people watching, the Jets snap the ball. Welcome to a moment in history. And in Indianapolis, the offensive coordinator, you got a busted play here, and then, oh, no. and then Sanchez gets hit, the ball is loose, and it's alive, and then going into the end zone is Steve Gregory. I have never seen this before in my life. The Patriots scored three touchdowns in 50 seconds that quarter and won 49-19. Sanchez now works at a Chick-fil-A in Nashville, so stop by and say hello, like, and subscribe.